Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to our 2 p.m. Uh, worship service. You are at Victory, we are at church. This is Victory Quezon Avenue and we exist for two reasons. That's to honor God and to make disciples. Lahat po nang ginagawa namin. It's anchored on those two things, honoring God and making disciples. My name is Junko. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm privileged today to share the word. And hopefully, uh, that word is to encourage you. But before we go to uh, the word today, I just want to thank some people. I want to thank our volunteers. Thank you sa mga ushers natin. Palakpakan naman natin mga volunteers natin. Si Lalita, si La Rose, si Evelyn, si Jen, and si Nel din. Yan. Okay. And of course, our worship team. Thank you so much, worship team. Palakpakan din po natin sila. Girly, Molly, si Jella, si Jaser, si Romer. Yan. Saka si Axel, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, also, thank you, Faith, for uh, encouraging us into giving. No? Uh, maganda yun dahil connected sa topic natin yan, no? your encouragement. And so for the last two weeks, we had a series break. No? Uh, our series break is uh, Make Every Effort. But today, we will start on a new series. And maganda po yung series natin, no? Uh, our series is about finances, our finances. And it's called Think Outside the Box. No? Hindi purong spelling yan. No? There's a real word play in that. No? Really, it's about the stability and financial freedom that people are looking for today it cannot be found in gaining more material things, more money, more wealth. When we think beyond possessions, when we think beyond what we have, when we think beyond material things, we will see that in Christ, okay, when we look to Jesus Christ, we will see that in Him, we can have abundant life. We can have true financial freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not all about material things. And hopefully, that's what we are going to uh, impart to you. For the next, I think our series will be three weeks. And for the next three weeks, hopefully, that's the impartation that you will receive uh, from us, the pastors here. Hmm? And so, as we begin, you know, in 1987, yung But in 1987, there was a movie that came out. Uh, I don't know if you, some of you, no, nakikita ko naman, may mga talagang, uh, hindi to inabot. No? But uh, some looks like baka napanood nyo no? or baka nasa Netflix na ngayon to. That movie is called Wall Street. Hmm? In fact, there's a part two. Last 2010, there was a part two no? na pinalabas. But the original, it went out uh, 1987. Okay. It's called Wall Street. And it's about stock trading. Hmm? Stock trading. And using insider information to gain in stock trading. In other words, nandadaya po sila. Now, that's the story. The story revolved in that. No? And of course, dahil nandadaya sila in stock trading, eh, yumayaman sila. No? Now, one of the main characters, his name is Gordon Gecko. Oh, hmm? That's the name of the, one of the main characters. And he is the epitome of evil. In the movie, no? kung, kung napanood niyo po yun, no? baka hopefully may nakapanood maski dalawa. <laughs> and in one of the scenes, this is what he said. Greed is good. Let me share to you the entirety of what he said. Okay? Listen to this. This is the entirety of what he said. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed for a lack of better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all its forms. Greed for life, for money, for love, knowledge, has marked the upward search of mankind. Yun yung kabuuhan. Nung sinabi niya. Now, 
for this man, what he's trying to say, you know, for this man, greed is a good motivator. That's the heart of what he's trying to say. Now, how many of you agree with him? Taas ang kamay. Sige na, yun totoo. Well, praise God, nobody agrees among you. I don't agree with him. No, praise the Lord that you don't agree with him. Now, in fact, today we will see that greed is bad. I'm going to talk about that. It's not part of how God designed that we live our lives. Greed is not part of that. Our topic today is this. Fool or fool. And we will, for our main text, we will use Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Now, in reverence to the word of the Lord, kung kaya lang po natin, ha, tayo po tayo. And we will also pray. Let me read it to you. Verse 13 to 21, starting with verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man who made me a judge or arbitrator over you. Verse 15, And he said to him, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. 17, And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. 19. And I will say to my soul, Soul, have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, Whose will they be? Last verse, verse 20. So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Let's just pray for today. We encounter a very interesting, yet a very, very difficult topic. It's not difficult to understand because it's finances, it's money. Lord, it's, what's difficult is to follow what you have designed for us with regards to our understanding of money. Lord, yun po yung mahirap eh. And today, God, my prayer is that, Lord, you will be the one working on our hearts. You will be the one softening our hearts with regards to what we need to do with regards to how we value all of these things. Lord, I pray for anointing today. Lord, I pray that you will guide me into all truth. Lord, I also pray for understanding. Holy Spirit, come. Fill up this place today. Give us divine understanding into all of this. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Sige po, pwede na po tayong maupo. Now, our passage today is about one of the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the parable of the rich fool. Remember that Jesus used parables or stories to illustrate certain realities in life to illustrate certain lessons in life. And the first thing that I want to share to you today is this, a desire. A desire. The road to having wrong, the wrong mindset about money and material things begin with a desire. Let's go back to verse 13. Let me read it to you once again. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my Brother, to divide the inheritance with me. Now, our passage begins with a man asking the Lord Jesus Christ to settle an inheritance claim between him and his brother. See, during their time, um, 
people went to rabbis or religious leaders to ask for help about settling disputes with regards to uh, inheritances. But what is really happening here in our passage? Hmm? See, Bible scholars say the problem here is not whether or not the inheritance was equally divided because they had laws that took care of that. Malinaw po yung mga laws nila back then. Kung ano yung dapat kanino at kung, kung ano yung amount, kung ano yung partihan. Malinaw po yun. So this is not about that. This is not about having equal division. But here's the thing. The point of argument here is that it was jointly given to two brothers. Okay? Uh, sundan nyo lang po ako, no? It was jointly given to two brothers. The man doesn't want joint ownership. Hmm? No, joint ownership. His desire is for personal gain. He wants to sever ties with his brother hmm? and be on his way free to do whatever he wants with his part. Gusto na po niya mag-separate sa kapatid niya. Okay? For personal gain. In other words, this is a case wherein money or material things is valued above family. Are we understanding it? Are we getting it right now? And if you think about it, this is the same problem that we still experience today. Hmm? How many times have we seen this happening today? Hmm? Ilang magkakapatid na ba? Yung nakita natin na nag-away-away dahil sa inheritance o dahil sa pamana. Hmm? Ilang pamilya na ba yung nasira hmm? dahil sa pera? And this is brought about by the desire to have more. Not having contentment. Like the man in our passage today. We actually have a word for that, not being content and wanting to have more. That word is greed. Which the Lord Jesus Christ addresses in the next part of our discussion today. How man acts on this desire. In this part of our discussion, Jesus shows us how easy it is for man to give in to this desire. Let's go to verse 14. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? Here we see the reply of the Lord Jesus Christ. By saying what he said, Who made me judge or arbitrator over you? Jesus is not saying that he has no authority over the man. What Jesus is trying to tell us is why is the man involving him in such a matter? Why is the man involving him in his personal gain? Why is the man involving him in his greed? That's the reason the Lord Jesus Christ is saying this, no? Because the man is involving him in the man's pursuit of his greed. It only goes to show that this man has no idea who Jesus is. Hmm? Siguro po, alam lang niya. Kilala to, si Kato, ah, religious leader to. Pero hindi niya kilala talaga kung sino si Kristo. No? Because uh, if he only knew the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus stands for the exact opposite of his desire. Eh, kaya na nga, hindi niya kilala eh. Di ba? Kaya lumapit siya. Hmm? In fact, we know that Jesus Christ lived a selfless life. Everything Jesus did was to benefit mankind. Amen? Tama po ba yun? Do you agree with me? Further on, Jesus gives him and those listening a warning. Verse 15. This is the warning. And he said to them, Take care. And be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Hindi lang yung tao yung winner ni Jesus eh. Makikita mo, 
He said to them, no? to everyone that was there, hmm? He wants everyone and the danger of covetousness. He wants everyone and the danger of greed and tell them, life is not about the pursuit of material things. Life is not about having more. Hmm? And you can't blame the Lord Jesus Christ for saying this because a lot of us are caught up with this. Tama ba? O ako lang, baka ako lang. No? Baka, nga, baka nga ako lang. <laughs> for instance, okay, kunwari lang to. Just an example, just to give you an example. For instance, how many of you have hobbies? Yan, no? Ilan sa inyo nagbabike? Ayun. <laughs> Buti na lang may kasama ako. <laughs> okay. No? So, mag-uupisa yan sa isang bike, di ba? Sayang sa isang bike. Alright? So, nakabili ka na ng bike. Meron po, isa lang po yung bike ko. Isa lang yung bike ko, bro. Mountain bike. No? So, ang gupo sa'yo, bili ka na isang mountain bike. No? Sa so, siyempre, may mga nakakasama ka mag-ride. Di ba? So, nakakasama mag-ride. Mag- Pupunahin yung bike mo. Di ba? So, sasabihin sa'yo na, ano, parang... Yeah, mararamdaman, hindi nila sasabihin yun na napapangitan sila, pero mararamdaman mo yun. Yeah, aramdaman mo lang, okay naman, okay. So, ikaw naman, so na-realize mo yun, di ka magiging contento ngayon. mag upgrade ka. So, syempre, upgrade ka, di ba? Kaya next time, di ba? Pag, sa next ride, upgraded na, wow! Di ba? Okay. Kaya lang, nag-upgrade na rin yung tumutulig sa sa'yo. Okay? Kaya anong gagawin mo? Di ba? Eh, mag upgrade ka rin ng buong bike na. Di ba? O di, nag-upgrade ka ng buong bike na in-upgrade mo. Di ba? Eh, nangyari, nag-road sila. Di ba? Eh, wala kang road bike. Diba? So, anong gagawin mo? Di ba? Sabihin mo sa, kung may asawa ka, love, yung grupo, puros road bike na, wala akong road bike. Alam mo naman, mountain bike lang ako, di ba? So, bibili ka na ngayon ng road bike mo. Di ba? Mamaya, dose na yung bike mo. <laughs> okay? At lahat may dahilan tayo. Di ba? Uh, meron tayong dahilan. Pare, binili ko yung mure di mo makukuha yan ng ganyan. Sa marketplace, sa eh, FB, binenta ng mura. Di ba? Nakuha ko yan, sale. Di mo makukuha sa iba yan. Sale. Sale nga, kailangan mo ba? Yun yung, yun, yun yung tanong eh, no? More. 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 No satisfaction. More. No? Then the Lord proceeds to share His parable in the next verses. Let's read it. Verses 16 to 18. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. Now, verse 16 introduces us to the parable. It's about a man, a rich farmer, who was abundantly blessed. It says in the verse, his land produced plentifully. Abundantly blessed itong taong ito. Now, the next two verses, verse 17 and 18, reveal to us the kind of heart that this man has. Both verses tells us that the experience of abundance led him to thinking of himself only. Look at verse 17. Hmm? Look at that. What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. It had led him to discontent. Hmm? Verse 17. Look at verse 18. His call to action is to tear down and build bigger barns. It's about having more. Hmm? He seems to have forgotten Two important biblical principles. Listen to this. Stewardship 
and generosity. Nakakalimutan ata nung rich farmer ito and only thought of himself. Now, stewardship is about the understanding that everything belongs to the Lord. Amen? Do you agree with that? It means that the abundance he is experiencing comes from the grace, the kindness, and the generosity of the Lord. Therefore, he ought to honor the Lord with his wealth. But do we see anything in the passage about that? Wala. Na, may, meron po ba kayo nabasa? And I will honor the Lord with some of my crops. There's none. There's none. We cannot see that. Hmm? Now, generosity is about being a blessing to others. God blesses us to be conduits of blessing to others. But is there any mention in the verse that He is going to be generous or is that He is going to bless others? Meron po ba kayo nakita? And I will give some of my crops to my neighbor. There's none. He only thought of himself. Yun yung napakalungkot na katotohanan. No? Walang ibang inisip kundi sarili lang niya. Further on in the next verse, verse 19, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. See, listen to this. Being totally self-absorbed and having foregone or departed from the biblical principles of stewardship, of being a blessing to others, the rich man's plan for the rest of his life is to enjoy his wealth. Yun, po, yun lang po yung plano niya. To focus on the pleasures of life. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. Now, how do you feel about that? As a Christian, how do you feel about that? Hmm? To tell you the truth, okay lang naman po yung mag-enjoy. Okay? Just wanna tell you, okay lang naman po yung mag-enjoy, you know? Pag meron kayong sobrang konti, di ba? Create memories, punta kayong Boracay. Di ba? Okay lang po yun. Di ba? Pagkasweldo ng, pagkasweldo, di ba? Gusto mong kumain ng masarap, punta kayo sa Wolfgang Steakhouse. Di ba? Okay lang po yun. Walang, wala namang, there's nothing wrong with enjoying life. However, the point is, if that's going to be the focus of your life, like the man, si sinasabi niya, yun lang yung focus niya eh. Okay, by the way, sabi rin pala ng Bible, no? Bawal maglaseng. Okay? Kasi may drink dyan, no? But that's what the Bible says. Okay? What we're trying to say here, okay, is that if that's going to be the focus of your life, then you might end up being frustrated. Why? The last part of our discussion tells us why. What God says about this desire. As our parable ends, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us how we should properly treat money and material possessions. Let's go to verse 20. But God said to him, Fool! This night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared. Whose will they be? Now, God calls the rich man fool and gives him a diagnostic question. Tinan niyo po yung diagnostic question. This night, your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared. Whose will they be? Whose will they be? Let me paraphrase this diagnostic question to you. This is the Junko version. Yan, basahin ko po sa inyo sa Junko version. Ha. If you die, all the money, all the things, all the wealth which you have made the center of your life, to whom will it go? That's the meaning of the question there. Hmm? It's like God is saying to this rich man, all your life, you only thought of yourself. You have dedicated your life to collect money, to collect material things, to collect material possessions. In the end, you know what? In the end, none of them will be yours. Because of this, you are a fool. Wala po tinuturo na, Because of this, you are a fool. 
But see, listen to this. There's not one pool in our passage. In fact, there's two. The next verse tells us who the other fool is. Let's go to verse 21. So is the one. So is the one who lays, who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The other fool, the passage tells us, is one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Meaning someone who only thinks of enriching himself. Hmm? Enriching himself materially and someone who does not honor God with his material possessions, who do not understand stewardship and generosity. He is someone who do not recognize the fact that it is God who gives us the ability to build wealth. Amen? Do you believe that? Hindi niya kinikilala yun. In other words, he is someone like the rich man. If you live for material possessions, the sad fact is, one day, you will be separated from them. Whether you like it or not. Time and again, I've been saying this. If you're living for the next iPhone 15, condolence. You know, isn't it sad that a person spends a lifetime chasing after these things only to realize he or she will lose them? And at the end, brothers and sisters, at the end, what really matters is our relationship with God, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you own a watch? Rilo? Tas nga kamay ng Merilo, yung Merilo? Meron kayong Rilo? You know what? In heaven, you won't need your watch. In fact, I don't even know if time would matter in heaven. Just to tell you frankly. Kaya nga po, sino po yung walang watch? Itong Patek Philip ko, gusto ko sanang pamigay na ito day. Sino? Taas po ang kamay. Nung... Mamaya na lang po tayo mag-usap. Okay? But do you understand what I'm trying to say? I hope, you know, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. No? Dito, kung mangungulekta tayo ng mangungulekta ng kung ano-ano, di ba? But you won't need them in heaven. See, at this point, I'd like to call one of our leaders. He is a businessman. In fact, he owns two salons. He's a businessman. He's a partner of many other businesses. And today, we will hear his own journey of realization with regards to wealth. Let me call on Albert Moronia. All right, thank you, Pastor Jun. So, si Pastor Jun, tagal na po namin magkaibigan. He's my uh, spiritual mentor. Ayan. So, alam nyo na kung sino mo kong pera. <laughs> okay. So, church, meron akong kwento sa inyo. Ngayon, gagawin ko kasi emotion to eh. Ayokong umiyak. <laughs> Kaya, participate kayo ha. Ngayon, sino sa inyo ang gustong umaman at maging milyonaryo? Raise your hands. Wow. Praise God. Thank you so much. You know what? That's my fate. Fate ko yan. When I was a kid, 10 years old, sabi ko, parang gusto kong umaman kasi mahirap lang kami. Parang desire ng heart ko maging milyonaryo. Then you know what? Nangyari po yun kasi nagtrabaho ako, nakapunta po ako na ibang bansa. Pagbalik ko sa Pilipinas, nagkaroon ako ng negosyo, Nagkaroon ako ng magandang trabaho at nagkaroon ako ng kotse, bahay, lupa, kondos na mga pag-aari. Meaning, natupad po yung pangarap ko. At nakapagpapaaral po ako ng anak sa isang magandang eskwelahan. Siyempre, 
international school, di ba? Meaning, kayang magpaaral. Okay? So, ayan. Guys, ha, medyo nag i sa ako, kaya medyo gagalaw ako ng konti. <laughs> ayan. And then, after that, nung uh, nakikita ko yung mayaman na ako, sang araw, umuwi ako sa bahay, nakita ko yung bed ng anak ko. Linagyan ko ng pera. Sabi ko, pahihigain ko ang anak ko sa pera. Tinawag ko ngayon si Shell. Uy, sorry na bakit yung pangalan. Pinahiga ko. Lay down on your bed. The bed of money. <laughs> Nahiga naman siya. Experience lang naman. Ano ko lang naman yun. Gusto ko makita niya na talagang pinaghihirapan namin yung pera. Church, gusto ko lang maintindihan ninyo na yung perang yun ay hindi galing sa masama. Okay? Talagang pinagtrabahuan namin ang mag-asawa yun. And then, one day, everybody say, one day. One day. Yun. Dumating ngayon yung friends ng wife ko, isa Christian. By the way, ha, hindi taga victory yun. <laughs> Gusto ko lang i-clear yun. May friend, yung asawa ko, isa Christian. In-invite siya sa isang business na investing business. Kailangan mo mag-invest ng pera. Okay? So ngayon, nag-invest yung wife ko na hindi ko po alam. You know what? I'm a Christian, 2005, here in Victory. Ngayon, yung asawa ko, hindi niya nasabi sa akin kasi alam niya na magsasay no ako pag sinabi niya na may pinasok siya ganitong bagay. Doon na, nagtuloy-tuloy. Okay, naging kaibigan, sinama siya. And then, kumita siya. Nung kumita na siya, sabi nung kaibigan niya, mag-invest ka ng milyon. Alright? So, di dumama na siya, no? Binigay niya sa, sa wife ko yung uh, kinita niya. And then, eto na. Guess what? Sabi niya sa akin, Albert, diden, may pera ako. <laughs> may sinalihan akong ganitong investment. Sabi ko, oo. Talaga? <laughs> Bakit ka pumasok sa ganyan? Kala niya, ha? Okay. Bakit ka pumasok sa ganyan? Ito, may ebidensya ako. Ito, kumikita talaga ako. Pwede ba tayong mag-invest? Eh, ang ganda ng preaching ni Pastor Jun because that time, may nakwento ako sa, sa wife ko na gusto kong mag-upgrade. Desire ng heart ko, bumili ng townhouse. Sabi ng wife ko, di ba gusto mong bumili ng townhouse? Ting! More. More. Upgrade. Upgrade. More. Yes, gusto ko. Pagkakataon mo na to. Mag-invest tayo. Eto na yung sinagot ko sa wife ko. Bahala ka. Alam niyo yun may doubt because you have faith na parang, sige muna, bahala na yung wife ko. Labas ako dyan. Pero hindi eh. Pumayag ako. And then, nag-withdraw kami ng pera. Pinuntahan namin yung opisina sa Trinoma. And then, hindi pa ako nakontento. Nagbenta pa kami ng properties. Wow. Para dalhin dun sa tao. Isa Christian people. <laughs> And then, you know what? What God says to me nung nakita ko yung tao, dala ko yung money, ito, sinimut ko yung pera namin sa bank, yung pe, dala kong pera, it's 2 million pesos. Bukod pa yung benta ng properties. Almost 4 million. Nung nakita ko yung tao, hindi po kayo yun. <laughs> Tingnan nyo po, wakain nyo yung Christian niya. <laughs> Sabi sa akin ng, ng Lord, by the Holy Spirit, very clear. Sabi niya, nagtitiwala ka ba sa taong yan? Oo. Oh. Grabe yun. Ito yung moment na umiiyak na ako. Noong nare-realize ko yung ginawa sa akin ng Holy Spirit. He guide me. You know what? Because we always praying to the Lord, James 1.5, ask for wisdom, right? Di ba? Always praying that. Lagi ko naalala yun. Pero nung pumasok yung greediness in my heart, 
Greedy na to eh. Wow. Ilang months lang, may tanahos na ako kasi ang laki ng, ang laki ng balik eh. Pag invest ka ng million, double millions din yung balik. Sabi ko, ayos. Inignore ko yung bulong ng Holy Spirit. Binigay ko yung pera doon sa tao. Pero hindi ako masaya. Lumipas ang isang araw, bigay na yung pera. Lumi- kami ng wife ko, hindi kami nagkikita sa bahay isang linggo na. Alam nyo ba kung bakit? Sige, tanongin niyo po. <laughs> Kasi, umiiwas siya sa akin. Dahil, after nung binigay namin yung pera, nawala na yung tao. Dito na po, umiiyak na ako dito. Ayoko lang pakita sa inyo. <laughs> okay. So, nawala na eh. Isang gabi, nanginginig yung wife ko. Kinukumbulsyon. Tapos, sinawa kang ganun. Ang init. Tingnan mo kung barometer. Wow, ang taas ng lagnat. In emergency ko po siya sa St. Luke's. Kahit wala na akong pambayan. <laughs> Naubos na hindi. Anyway, dinala ko po siya doon. Noong gumaling siya, nag, nag two days po kami doon, gumaling siya, umuwi kami, na-relax siya, and then, nung umayos na yung pandamdamin niya, nag-usap po kami. Pinatawag niya po ako, kwentuhan kami, sabi niya, kaya siya nagkasakit kasi hinahanap nila yung tao noong nanloko sa kanila. Naiskam po kami. Nung narealize ko po yun, tumakbo po ako doon sa corporate room namin. And then, sabi ko, napaluhod ako sa Panginoon. Dito po, iyak na po ako na iyak. Sabi ko, Lord, punong-puno ng greediness yung heart ko. Ako po'y nagpapakumbaba sa inyo dahil nagkasala po ako sa inyo. Nagkasala po ako, Panginoon. Isang mong lingkod na alukan ng isang malaking pera, binaliwala ko ang voice mo. Lumabas po ako doon sa comfort room. Linapitan ko po yung asawa ko. Hinawakan ko yung kamay. Sabi ko, magpray tayo. Hindi ikaw ang kalaban ko, kundi ang devil spirit na umatak sa atin. Ang pera, babalik yan. Magtatrabaho tayo. Magninegosyo tayo. Pero ang relationship na wasak, na giba, na destroy, napakahirap i-build Sabay iyakang kami mag-asawa. And that time, what I learned and experience, I humble to God. Nagkaroon ako ng desire, ng greediness in my heart. Ginawa ko, ibinalik ko sa Diyos. Binalik ko sa Diyos. And you know, God helped me in this time. Sabi ng John 16.33, In this word, a lot of trouble. But take heart, I overcome the world. Ang binigay sa akin ni God ay yung peace of heart. Binigin niya ako since 2016 na nangyari sa amin yun. Five years in struggle of finances until 2021. Binigyan ako ng Panginoon ng peace para hindi balikan yung mga bagay na nangyari sa amin ng asawa ko. And help of this spiritual community and people na surround us. Wow. Come on. Praise God. Ito yung highlight sa moment na ito. Sabi niya Deuteronomy 8.18 God give you to producing wealth and ability. And guess what? The Lord our God and your God also 
binigyan kami ng mag-asawa ng opportunity na mag-business sa Amerika at tumira sa Amerika. Ang asawa ko, nandun na siya ngayon. Ako, inaalalayan ko pa yung anak ko rito dahil nag-aaral pa siya. And then, inuubay ko pa yung will ni Lord kung ano yung nararapat para sa amin. And then, the lesson for this afternoon is we always seeking God in His righteousness. Alright? So, Pastor Jun, pwede ko ba sila ipag-pray? Can I pray for you? Yes, Father God in heaven in this time. Panginoon, naalala ko po yung Hoseas 4.6. Sabi mo dun, my people will perish because destroy of knowledge because we're not listening to you, Lord. Lord, in this time, in this mga babae, lalaki man sa harapang ito, Lord, I pray, Panginoon, laging makinig sa mga sinasabi mo sa kanila. You always obedience for your word, God. May finances sila ngayon na hawak. Hindi nila alam kung lalagay nila sa negosyo, mag i sila. Lord, in this time, alam ko may tao na nandito ngayon na naguguluhan pa sa kanyang finances. And I pray for them, God, na isurrender niya sa iyo, God. Na ikaw talaga ang maging uh, batayan niya, Panginoon, para kung anong gagawin niya sa kanyang finances. Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful day na binigyan mo ako ng opportunity to share my experience in my life about finances. We just thank you, God, and this is my prayer sa pangalan mo, Jesus, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Thank you very much, Church. God bless you all. Wow, what an amazing story that was. You know? And uh, today I'm going to end with an appropriate verse you know, with reference to the word that we have shared today and with reference to that story. I'm going to end with Matthew 6, verse 33. Let me read it to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. In everything, church, let us first seek the Lord. Let's prioritize God. God first. Hmm? Let's prioritize our relationship with the Lord. Let's not be self-absorbed with material possessions. God can and will bless us with all of these things. Amen. But first, let us set our eyes on God. Nga, sabi nga ni Albert, no? God is a God of uh, second chances, no? Hindi nga second, third, fourth, fifth, no? And after, no, there, was, there were losses. But right now, He continues to thrive in His brand new businesses. No? Praise God for that. Do not give in to the allure of money. Do not give in to greed. And understand, let us seek the fullness of God, not the foolishness of greed. Let's just pray today. Lord, we want to be rich, God. Yes, but first and foremost, we want to be rich in the Lord. Yun ang unang yaman na pinagdadasal namin sa iyo. Lord, help us. Because there are a lot of times, Lord, when the glitter of gold gets to us. When the sparkle of money, God, gets to us first. But today we have heard the story. Through thick and thin, you are with us. And so, Lord, allow us to understand that we should prioritize you. You are worthy. Lord, help us not to worship material things, not to worship money. Yes, they are important things in our lives. Yes, we won't be hypocrites, God. 
But Lord, help our hearts. Not to the extent that we worship them. That we bow down to them. Make money only our servants. Lord, not our lords, not our gods. I want to pray for another set of people here today. Now we are claiming fullness of God. But do you know that the fullness of God begins when you accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And so the question is, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Because if not, how can you be full of the Lord Jesus Christ? How can you, your heart be filled up with the Holy Spirit if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? It's not by chance that you are here today. It's not by chance that you heard Albert's testimony today. God has planned for that long ago. It's not by chance that you can relate to that story. You've been worshiping money or you've been worshiping material things or making it your priority, but it has led you nowhere. The promises of material things are temporary. Only Jesus Christ can promise you peace that lasts. That's why today, if you believe that God, that this is the time that you should accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it begins with a prayer. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you believe that you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Pray this prayer with me today. Heavenly Father, I admit you were never my priority. But that's still today. Today, Everything changes. Today, I no longer want money to be my Lord. You are my God. You are my Savior. You are Messiah. Father, I ask forgiveness of my sins today. Lord, forgive me. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon. And today, God, I accept you into my life. The road ahead may be difficult. But as long as I have you to guide my path, I will get there. Thank you that salvation is now upon me. Thank you for your grace. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.